Hey guys, time for another audit of the project that you sent me. So today we're gonna be looking at two mobile screens. Starting with the splash screen, I'm gonna move the text under the image. It's gonna be more visible that way. And since the button here is the most important and the only action, I'm gonna make it a lot bigger and centered. And I'm using the optical alignment technique with squares to align the label on the button to be fully in the center. So in this case, I need to decrease the font size a little bit so the text is actually in the center of the shape. And since the layout is based on an 8-point grid and already uses 16 and 24 as the grid numbers, I'm gonna paste in a square that's 24 by 24 and I'm gonna align one text to the other based on that. To align an image like that, I'm gonna grab a ruler guide and drag it to the center of the screen and then I'm gonna align the image so that the person is split practically in half. So I'm just gonna use the neck as the base. So if there is just as much neck on the left and the right of the line, then the person is centered because the bubble on top of that person doesn't have to be centered. It's more about the character. This is of course fully optional, but in the chapter on gradients in our book we actually mentioned that there aren't really that many solid colors in the world, because the light is always hitting surfaces in a different way and pretty much every color that you see is a gradient, so gradients look a little bit more natural than solid colors. So I'm creating a pretty subtle gradient here for the background. Now it's also good when the main CTA button is not an outline button because this type of buttons is usually used for secondary ones. So if this is a primary button and it is because it's the only one here, I'm gonna change it and invert it so it's gonna be white and it's gonna have a shadow underneath. And there are many ways to align the button to the text, but my preferred way for this type of screens is to align it to the same distance from the bottom of the screen and the same distance on the top from the letters. And then you can use the similar value to align the image, the bottom of the image to the top of the text. Yeah, and I just got so into the little details that I forgot to actually check the screen sizes. And as you can see, these screens are not really based on any actual phone. They're 411 by 826. And if you're adding a real iPhone next to them, you see that the proportions are a little bit different. So it's actually good to design for real device sizes. Okay, let's look at the second screen. So first of all, there is this uh, pretty unusual side navigation. And while this can make some sense in some products, if you only have five options, it's always best to go with a horizontal tab bar at the bottom of the screen. Now, the roundness of a shape that's within another shape should be proportional to it. So I'm just gonna change the background color to red so we can see it better. So in short, in this case, the diagonal distance should be the same as the distance from the left, the top and the right. And it's clearly a little bit bigger than that. So let's adjust the roundness until we have a match. It's still not yet there, so it needs to be tweaked just a tiny bit more. And yeah, now it looks kind of good. So now I can change the red back to the original color and we can play around with other elements on this screen. Icons should be consistent throughout the entire product, so they should have the same proportion and the same line thickness. And as you can see, the second icon from the top is a little bit thinner, and then the first icon actually has some shading that none of the other ones have. If you're going with outline icons, try to use strokes instead of fills, because it's gonna be a lot easier to modify them. In this case, I'm just gonna hack this icon a little bit by adding a stroke the same color as the fill, and then making it a little bit smaller. But this trick is only for presentation purposes and working this way on real product is not recommended. The second icon also has a gap on the side while none of the other ones do, so that's an inconsistency as well, but we're not gonna fix that here. And I'm also gonna fix the stroke width of the top icon here. Okay, now let's play around with the selection, because I believe that it needs a little bit more contrast, because currently the icon looks exactly the same like all the other icons, and the light blue is a little bit too light on that light background, so some people might not even see it. So I'm copying the gradient from the first screen, and I'm creating a rectangle that's gonna be our selection indicator, and I'm gonna paste the gradient to it. And now we can switch the selected icon to white. And I'm gonna add a little bit of a shadow to the selected icon as well, so it stands out from the background even more. Now the next step is to clean up the font sizes a little bit, because the main top message is the same size as the category indicators, and I think that they should be a little bit different, because they mean different things. 
And I think that you should avoid using fonts that are smaller than 10 or 12 on mobile devices. So the main text here is eight and it's a little bit too small. I'm gonna change it to 12. And you can go with a much smaller font, 10 for example, for the meta information. So in this case, the author. But to rework these cells, I'm gonna detach them from the symbols and I'm gonna remove most of them. So I can actually have a little bit more space to play around and come up with a slightly more readable solution. So as we now have larger fonts, let's increase the size and then increase the size of the image as well. And of course I'm gonna decrease the roundness of the image so the corner radius is actually matching the corner radius of the whole field. Now let's add some white space to the cells and rearrange the text a bit. And it starts to look way better already. Now I increase the meta text to 10 points and we can remove the by because it's pretty clear that it's the author here. So the by thing is redundant. It's gonna be just a duplicate in every cell. And now let's move it to the left. Or we can move it just under the title so the text actually has a lot more space to flow underneath and we can actually add a little bit more of that excerpt text. And if the plan is to have a carousel here, then let it be that way. So I'm just gonna move a copy of this to the side. Now let's create the second section and it's gonna be pretty similar to the first one, but the cells are gonna be wider, so they're gonna be full width here. And once we get to this point, it's really good to consider some extra white space. We can use that empty space, that white space, to separate our sections a lot better. And if you're creating a lot of different cells on a screen, it's really good if each of them has a completely different picture. So I'm gonna add an Unsplash plugin to Figma and then I'm gonna just randomize the photos here. Because if you have different photos and likely different text as well, this is just gonna look way more natural than when it's just the same photo every time. Now to space out the icons, I'm using the similar size shape as we have for the selection, just duplicating it, making it a little bit transparent. Then we can center the icon in it and then move it back to another location and then center the next icon. And then after we're done with this, we can hide that shape. And if you watched my trends video for 2021, then you know that big typography is gonna be a thing this year. So I'm just gonna make this title here a lot bigger. And I'm gonna use a 48 spacing, which is still divisible by eight to space our sections from each other. So that's gonna make it look a little bit more consistent visually. And if we're using gray, it's really good that the gray is actually coming from the main color here. So I'm just gonna pick the purple for the background here and then make it a super, super light purple. So it's gonna be a very light gray, but it will have a hint of that purple to make the entire screen look consistent. And just to make it all more clear and more readable, I'm gonna increase the margins, the inner margins for our entire content section. Now, once we have this entire structure complete, let's increase the size of this viewport to actually match an actual phone. And then let's modify the elements to match that. Okay, now it's time to visualize our screens in some nice way. So I'm pasting in our clay mockups, and if you want those mockups, you can actually get them for free. I'm gonna link it in the description, and you can see a full tutorial on our Instagram, so go there right now and give us a follow, so you're not gonna miss a thing. But in this tutorial, we're gonna actually show you how you can make those mockups yourself. So just duplicating the mockups, adding the screens, and aligning it a little bit better, and we're done here. Just make sure that the screen is in the center of the mockup. You can either use a mask or just round the corners of the exported PNG image. And it's best to go with PNGs because they have higher quality. And once you're done with this, you can then export this entire mockup screen and you'll have a very nice portfolio piece. Just like this. Yeah guys, so that's it for today. I modified the screens a little bit, but of course some of these changes are completely optional. But I think that with some of them, these screens are looking a lot better and I hope it's gonna be helpful. So don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video and I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Cheers!